This meeting is now being recorded. Good afternoon, Derby agents. This is Kevin Shady at Derby headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky, where we've got Sherm Henderson, Mike Wagner, and myself here uh, in the in the green room. If you've ever been here before, and again, uh, I thought last week's weather was was perfect, and uh, we've, we've dialed up another one uh, for a Thursday afternoon. I hope you're somewhere where you can enjoy this weather if you're getting the same kind of weather we are in Louisville uh, today, tomorrow, and of course on college football Saturday. But uh, I digress. We're here not to talk about sports. We're here to talk about Info Preserve. And we've got uh, Eric Leenberg here with us, who's the CEO and founder of uh, Info Preserve. And he's going to get on, uh, walk us through a little refresher course of uh, the solution that Info Preserve brings to the table for your clients, and then give us a live demonstration. Uh, you know, you understand, it's technical, anything can happen, but giving us a live demonstration uh, of the online, new online portal system that they've just released uh, in, their, in their update to their system. So, Eric, it's all yours. Yeah, thanks. So, so I guess we're going we're gonna to test out all the features of uh, Global Meet here today. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, we're located up here in uh, what is today a uh, Beautiful sunny day in the low 70s in Rochester, New York. So we're enjoying life here as well. So uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, if uh, like any remember, uh, Info Preserve, our solution is called the uh, Preservation Vault, and we're going to jump right into uh, just a, just a quick overview and reminder of the solution. If you really think about um, at at the highest level what we do. Uh, we essentially take the three key types of information that, that you would have, which, which are typically going to be digital files, uh, emails with attachments, and you know, everybody says they're going to get rid of them. We're always going to have some amount of paper, and it's a matter of being able to make all those, uh, you know, organizing all those so you, so you can search and find them. And one of the biggest issues, uh, you know, you know, everybody's got lots of information, and nobody wants. You know, it's like everybody dreads going. It's like, oh, how am I going to find something? How you know, I have to go and spend hours, days, weeks, months organizing it. Well, the beauty of our system is you don't need to do that because uh, it's as this diagram shows. It's like taking all that, all that information, putting it through a funnel, putting it up into our cloud, and then making that uh, accessible. You know, 24 7 anytime anywhere you have a secure internet connection and that's uh, you know our our new slogan here and it's uh, retrieve the way you think you know you don't have to uh, remember uh, what you call it or where you put it I always use the example think of a word doc you worked on two months ago and you call it this and you put it in this directory now you're searching you can't find it I mean we've all been there uh, what do you remember? You remember something that was in the file. So if you can search just based on the on the content to find it, you'll probably find it pretty quick. Maybe a few times, but within a minute you'll probably find it. So that's that's kind of the, that's the basic premise of our system. Now, how does it work? What are, what do we do? It's like the, well, what we've really done is on top of that, we've basically uh, layered the you know it's like features and functionalities where we've combined. Uh, like seven different products in a one. It's like so you got. Uh, I won't get into into details on, on all these, but it's like you know, uh, file sharing. We all know about file sharing platforms like Box and Dropbox. You know, we do that that uh, sub segment segment. That's a component of what we do. Uh, we certainly provide online storage, and you can also use this to back up your data information. Another key part is is um, being able to manage and keep your information over a long period of time. Uh, you know, it's like being able to manage it and, and be able to find it and access it not only today, but two years from now or five years from now. Then also we provide a, uh, you know, a component of uh, content management. So you can, you know, it's like edit files. We'll, you can edit it. It'll upload it again and create a new version. So you can uh, you manage different versions of your files. Then also we allow you to uh, take a file, scan it, upload it, and if you want, you can have it automatically converted either to a editable Word or 
or Excel file that you can use. And then, of course, with scan files, uh, as with the digital files, we pull out all of the content and make that searchable, and that's what we call our instant organizer. Okay, just a couple of real uh, a reminder of a couple important aspects uh, to remember. Uh, as you go out and, and sell a solution, that's like every customer is going to have uh, you know information they're going to need to to find. But if you go out and try to sell this as a generic solution, uh, their eyes are going to glaze over and they're not going to listen to you. So what you really need to do is go in there and focus, uh, uh, you know, find something that's their area of greatest need. Talk to them about, um, you know, it's like, you know, what, it's like what information do you have, what documents do you have that you needed to find that you had problems finding? And so you can keep probing until they, you know, you, you're, you get something that really resonates and they're like, Oh yeah, it's like you know, for example, it's like they came in and it's like we just had an HR audit done and the HR person couldn't find the I nine files and you know we got you know, we got whacked with, with fines. And it's like or or it might be uh it's like, yeah, we had to go and find the board minutes from uh five years ago and I, you know, it's like and and couldn't find them. So so it could, might be anything, but what you really need to do is is you know, hone in on uh what that customer's uh, pain points or pain points are in the area of you know managing documents and information, and then also if you know some of the key features of the product from there, then you can go on to uh, figure out how those can address some of those problems. Uh, and here too, uh, in this presentation, uh, it's like I, I took them out from here, but uh, if you go and download the presentations. Uh, I've also included it at the end, I'm not going to go through them today, uh, some common sales objections that you might get and how to overcome them. Okay. So some of the key selling points that, that you want to think about, you know, we provide you know, permanent and safe storage. It's like you're uh, eliminating a single point of failure. It's like no longer, you know, it's like you know, paper files, you can lose them. A lot of companies, you know, it's like you know, you've got stuff on laptops, servers. It's like, is it is it getting backed up? Do you have that information? <clears throat> and also, one of the key issues nowadays is even in house, you never know when an employee's walked in with a flash drive, downloaded something off the network drive, and walked out the door. Well, you put it up into our platform, we can tell you exactly uh, who's accessed what and where, and it doesn't matter whether it's from the office, from home, from a customer. Or from a coffee shop, and that kind of goes to the you know your information is available anytime, anywhere, you know from any device. Uh, get it from your your computer, your tablet. Uh, you've got apps for both iOS and Android devices, so you really can get to your information uh, anywhere. You have security internet connection, which today is pretty much anywhere. Okay. <coughs> Another uh, another key thing uh, uh, that where you'll always get objections from customers. It's like they always uh, think, "Oh, I have all this information. It's, it's this is going to require me uh, to engage my IT department. I'm going to have to install all sorts of stuff. We're going to have to figure out how to organize all this information." Uh, you don't have to do any of that. Basically, uh, like the first slide showed. Uh, you log into your account, dump all the stuff into the funnel, upload it, and you can start searching through it. And that's you know, that bullet number four there. You know, it's like it immediately searches through that unorganized data. You don't have to categorize it or anything. You, you can find it. Again, you can retrieve the uh, information the way you think. And here's kind of a slide uh, going to that. So it's uh, you know, somebody just. You know, you might be looking for an invoice. I'm looking for, you know, like my Time Warner cable invoice for February uh, 2014. Type that in search, boom, up it comes. You know, I'm looking for uh, all the I-9s. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you got the, you got the feds in doing a, and, uh, you know, it's an HR audit. So, oh, here's all our I-9s. Okay, go away and go bother somebody else. Or you're going in, you're looking for your uh, you know, your lease, you know, for 
for your for your office, what, whatever you need. So you just basically can go in and start searching and find it based on the content. Uh, another uh, key thing with information, and it, you know, it's like it's great that you can make the information quickly and easily accessible from any time, anywhere. But the situation that creates uh, is now you, very often you're putting control of that information into the individual's hands. You know, like with file sharing platforms like Box and Dropbox, yeah, they're great for sharing pictures of the grandma, but do you really want your employees uh, taking your confidential files and sharing them through Box and Dropbox, you don't know, you know, what they shared with who. With our platform, we put a wrapper around it that allows the business to secure, control, and manage that information. Uh, you know, we get full audit trails of who's accessed what, you know, access to different uh, buckets of information uh, can be assigned to different users. Obviously, you don't want everybody looking at HR data, so uh, the HR manager would have access to that. You know, if it's a law firm, the, the lawyers would have access to the litigation files. Uh, so you, you can segment it that way, but still then within those areas, you can still go in and search based on the content. Uh, and here we already I already kind of touched on the uh, it's like the seven different uh, solutions or uh, components that we've we've built in here, so I'm not not going to dwell on here. And the big announcement that we had was uh, the week uh, week after uh, Labor Day, we released a brand new user interface um, in our whole platform. Uh, now has a, a modern app-like interface, and it's got really simplified navigation. So from here, we'll uh, uh, just kind of move on to what you know. What do you really need to know in order to be able to sell this? It's like, well, basically remember so like those seven points and things, and some of the things that that the platform does, and but when you, you know, it's like when you go to talk to the customers, you know, you know, don't sell it as a generic uh, document uh, solution. I mean, it's a it's a very versatile solution, does a lot of things. But what you need to do is go in and uh, it's like from an information management standpoint, you know, find out what information that customer has that's a pain in the ass from the find. Um, another thing too that I want, wanted to uh, get into it's like we actually have uh, uh, new enterprise pricing uh, it's still based on uh, you know number of users so it's like uh, you know tier one would be the lowest and then going up to uh, you know, mid enterprise companies would be over 250 employees and it's a per user per month month pricing based on the number of users you bring on the platform hey Eric um, yeah. Is it a 10 user minimum, or are you just showing that uh, just for the first tier? Um, yeah, we um, we typically, you know, it's like if you got someone with less than 10, um, you know, we'll, we 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 typically try to hold the base at 10, so you got like a $300 per month minimum. But if if you got a, a real small shop, we actually have a uh, and it's like a uh, real small business package that that we also sell that's designed for like one to twenty users. So we typically recommend for the enterprise tier to try and start at ten users. If you if you want to go below that, you know, talk to me. You know, it's like you know, if if it's if it's a real small customer uh, and you know they only got three or four. Employees and, and they really want to use it. We'll, we'll we'll work with them. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, you know, it's like uh, next steps. Uh, one of the things that anybody out there that wants to uh, feel free to contact me, and I'll give you a you know, personal walk through and uh, demo. We're going to get into one here in a moment. Uh, we also have uh, what we call a sandbox account that's got um, it's pre-populated with 
uh, data. That's actually what I'm going to be using today. Uh, if anybody uh, needs an account for uh, for demo purposes, it's pre-populated. Again, talk to me. Uh, we can you know, again, we can try and customize it to um, customer you're talking to. You know, obviously, if you're talking to uh, you know, a healthcare firm, you probably not want to don't want to show a demo of legal records, so we can customize it to whatever you want. Um, we can also, for anybody that wants, we can provide you with your own free account that you can use to put your own you know, documents and information. I really encourage everybody to do that because if you become familiar with the system and know how it works, uh, it's going to be a lot easier when, when you have customers asking questions about it. Um, one other thing, too, we now have uh, admin and user guides that you can provide to the customers, uh, and obviously we can also provide those to everybody. Uh, an email that went out yesterday of this, I uh, hope everybody uh, was able to go out and look at the uh, Sketchpad video that we created uh, on YouTube. It's up in the uh, Derby Agency channel. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, please go and, and take a look. It's uh, just under three minutes, and it really does a great job in uh, you know, talking about what the system does and conveying the value proposition. And it's something that you can also you know show to customers or point customers to. And then finally, uh, you know, we do have anybody that needs any help with you know uh, how to target a specific customer. Uh, I'd actually welcome people you know giving me a call saying, well. Uh, I've got such and such a customer. Uh, can you give me some uh, great probing questions to ask? And I'll probably ask you a few questions to learn a little about the customer and, and you know, get, hopefully give you the, the right questions to get in and ask of them. Uh, one other thing that, that uh, well, you know, it's like we have a Q4 promotion that we're putting out through the end of the year. Uh, anybody that closes uh, five deals um, by the end of the year will receive a $500 gift card. So hopefully anybody that can uh, use a $500, $500 extra towards their their uh, Christmas fund, uh, we uh, we look forward to sending out as many of these as uh, as we can. So anyway, Kevin, maybe here we can jump into the uh, the demo. Yeah, go right ahead. I think all you need to do is just share your screen and uh, pop up your demo and go ahead and fly. All right. So where, where do I share the screen from? It's uh, the very top of the bar where it has home and then screen share. You just click on screen share. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got you. And while, uh, while, while Eric is uh, sharing his screen with us and assuming you don't have to go through any uploads or anything of uh, uh, the screen share, uh, Software. Let me just kind of reemphasize a couple of points while he's getting his demo ready. Yeah. They're offering you a free account. Free. You don't have to spend anything on it, and you're going to get your all of your own documents uh, and all of the uh, papers and white papers and uh, presentations and order forms and co sales collateral and all the sales tools that you have available on your laptop or PC or tablet and have them available to you right there and then anywhere that you are as long as you've got a connection to the Internet. So it's going to help you organize everything you've got going on. It's going to give you access to everything that you have and all the documents that you could ever want or need because you've got them all stored on your hard drive somewhere. Uh, rather than do that, store them in the cloud. That way you've got access to it, and you can do what you need to do. And they're offering it to you for free, guys. So you should take advantage of this, A, just to get your own uh, agency squared away and, and in order, and B, so that you then can uh, share uh, that experience with your client and say, you know what, uh, I was kind of on the fence about this stuff, but then I tried it, and, man, it's worked great for me. I've been able to find files, you know, in, in seconds or minutes, they used to take a half an hour to 45 minutes to figure out which folder it's in and then find the right version. 
uh, the, the system that they've got here is, is just phenomenal for that. It can help you not only store your files, but retrieve them, because that's the hardest part. And not only your files, but your emails and your faxes and your scans. It brings all of that information, all the communication tools that you use today, all those different methods, and brings it all into one big, huge vault that they call the preservation vault. Eric, you ready? Yep, that was great. It's like, uh, uh, I think I'm going to send. I think I'm going to send you on the road talking to some customers. <laughs> I can be bought. All right. Hey, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> All right. So uh, now, Kevin, can you see my uh, see the login screen? Yes, I see it fine. Okay. All right. So good. So everybody's uh, seeing it then. I was able to share the screen. Uh, this is basically the login screen. Uh, the thing to note here is uh, when you go to the login screen, that's where you can automatically download the uh, mobile apps for either Google Play or uh, iOS. Or if you go, you know, if you go onto your mobile device, there's, uh, you know, if it's a, if it's an Android device, just go to the Google Play Store, search on Info Preserve, download it. You've got uh, same thing going going through the uh, App Store uh, on Apple for any iOS device. Download it. Uh, one of the one of the real nice things, in addition to being able to search and look at documents right on your smartphone or tablet, um, you know nowadays all of them have cameras built in. You can if you're out somewhere and there's a document that you need to get and you've got no way to make a copy of it, you can. Snap pictures of it, click upload, it'll put it together in the document, and, and as long as you've got a pretty decent picture of it, it'll even uh, pull out the text and make that searchable. So that said, we'll log in and uh, and uh, give you a quick demo of the, of the uh, platform here. Now, I just uh, logged in as, uh, as a... Uh, and a regular search and upload user. Uh, this account is set up as a you know, fictitious law firm, so I've got, uh, you know, it's like access to a bunch of, of legal stuff. There's uh, information on several different cases. Um, we've got information from, uh, you know, this attorney's working on the Enron case, you know, reopened that from uh, years back, uh, and several other cases, and there's also a category that's got uh, music IP, this, this law firm here. Also, it just happens to handle um, all the, uh, you know, say, trademark stuff for, for the, uh, you know, all the vehicle stuff. So, as far as, uh, you know, it's like, as far as uh, searching for stuff, you can search and find uh, information that's in not just, uh, individual files, but also within emails. And I'll show you that. <clears throat> in those Enron data that we have, um, there's a lot of references to the Tennessee Valley Authority. So I'm going to say I want to search on Valley Authority, but I want to go in here and I want an exact phrase. I just want Valley Authority all together so I can select that. Hit search, and it'll go out and it found a bunch of documents in it that it's in. And it also found it, and it said, oh, I know I was looking for uh, the emails that it was in. So here's a PSD file. This is a, like a one gig file that contains a whole bunch of emails. And it happened to find it in four different emails. Um, so I'm going to take a look at this first email here. Okay, so there I opened up the email. It says, ah, oh, it, there's two attachments to this email. And they're highlighted, so it says, okay, the search term I was looking for is in the attachments. So I open up the attachment, and there's the term. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know, it's like I've got enough problems trying to find an email that uh, you know Sherm sent me last week. You know, let alone trying to find an attachment that he sent me. So this shows you, uh, you know, it's like by just entering a search term, you can you can uh, immediately drill down and find uh, the document that was attached to an email. And actually find the you know the email it was in reference to, so that's 
that's pretty powerful. It's something that you're not going to, uh, that I'm not aware of that you can do in in any other platform. Now, to make this a, a little more more fun, one of the things that uh, this uh, fictitious law firm here, as I said, was they're managing all the uh, uh, all the trademark and IP for for old Beatles stuff. So, so I'm like, oh, I want to, you know, it's like, you know, we had somebody who looked like they were copying. Uh, the uh, the song uh, she was just 17, so I'm gonna see if I can search and find that. So I type type in she was just 17. Right? And I don't want to do an exact phrase match. Do search. Oh, didn't come up with anything. I wonder why. Oh, maybe you know what, maybe it's maybe it's in there as the number 17. Sorry, so I'm gonna search on she was just 17 with the number and. Um, uh, it's like, and uh, um, it's, <clears throat> and uh, well, I'm sorry, anyway, and and uh, you can also, it's like uh, you can also search for. Uh, Hello? Did I lose? Hello? We're here. Keep going. Oh, okay. I, I thought I thought, uh, I thought I got to hang up there. Um, anyway, uh, one one thing too I wanted to get into uh, quickly is just for uploading files. What uh, the quickest and simplest way to get information into the platform is uh, you go in and select a category you want to upload stuff. So in in this case, all right, I'm going to put something into uh, an active case. I'm working on a case uh, for the state of Helena Kane. I got a bunch of files here that I want to upload, so I can uh, take and, uh, and select some of these files, put them in here, and just click start upload. Oh. Tells me I've got I've got to enter a matter number so I can track what what, uh, what the matter number is and who the client is and start the upload. And those files are are uploaded. If I go over to the search, you see the two files are here. They're currently being processed. Within a minute, you'll see that that. They'll appear here, and they'll be 100% searchable. Now, <clears throat> while I was talking about the, uh, you know, the upload screen here, it's like, all right, you can, uh, you know, you can drag and drop things in here, and um, that's pretty simple and easy. But there's actually an even easier way to get information in. Uh, install what's called the <coughs> upload tool, which allows you to log in. And uh, and then uh, the user so now I can go to any file and say click right click on it, say upload to info preserve and I can just automatically upload it that way. The other thing I can do is all right, I've got a file here that's got a bunch of uh, business research information that I need for a case. So I'm going to be putting information in there so I can say I'm going to set this up as what I call a watch folder. So I, I, uh, this, is, this is an active case. This is state of Helena Kane. Uh, Matter number and enter that information. Click save. Now anything that looks like if I, I save that and now that info any all the information that's in there, see it's already it's, it's going up automatically in the background. If I take uh, if I take an additional file and add it in there, that will also go up in in the background. Uh, 
with uh, if you're dealing with scan find out documents, take a file, put drop it in your scanner, have it drop to the folder that you've set up as a watch folder. That information will automatically go up in the background, and you'll have uh, those files available in you know, say in your account. So ba basically, uh, that that's kind of a quick and dirty demo showing you. It's like a, one, one of the other, uh, just to talk about the uh, the new UI. The old UI has this list view right here, which is still available. You know, it's got just finally everything. But what we did is we implemented here this new grid view. So it basically shows you the first page of the, the document that you're that you're looking for. So uh, anything that's uh, you know anything that's been recently uploaded will 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 show up here. I mean yeah, anything you have in here will be will will now be uh, searchable. There's a back on the Beatles lyrics. I was looking for some yellow submarine. Yeah. There, yeah. Yeah, there it is. If I wanted, uh, right. Um, that's that's basically the you know, kind of the. Um, Quick overview of the of the um, functions. Um, there's uh, there's actually uh, I, I logged in here as just like a basic everyday user. There's also an administrative user that has the capability of going in and configuring users and uh, uh, checking um, the the um, you know, the the uh, access logs, who's done what, uh, and if anybody wants, I can you know, get into details and. And show you how that stuff works, but uh, um, but anyway, that's uh, that's kind of a quick and dirty um, demo, and uh, I guess I can turn it back over to uh, Kevin here. Okay, hey Eric, a couple of questions, and if uh, yes. the agents have any questions, just uh, let me know. I'm going to unmute uh, any of the mics and mute it as well, so that. Uh, anybody can just speak if they need to or have a question, but I've got a couple. Um, first off, yep. on the document side, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Is it anything different on uh, uh, collecting all your emails and faxes and things like that? Um, that you mean than, than it was before? Right, right. Well, I mean, I'm sure some of the oh. folks on the call don't know how it works for email, so uh, it, it can, can it, it does store all your emails as well, so you can retrieve them too, right. correct? That's correct. Here, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's like, okay, right here, I opened up uh, uh, Outlook, and I've got a bunch of emails that I put in here. If any individual email, I can right-click on the email, say Upload to Info Preserve. It comes up with the upload screen, and I can, uh, and it's like, you can bring that individual email up. Instead, all right, I've got a, I've got a folder here. Where I'm putting stuff related to the, the state of uh, uh, Helena Kane, and say I want so I want to make sure anything that I put in there automatically goes up. I can set that up as a watch folder. So from that time going forward, anything you know, like if I take um, you know, say ah this email right here, uh, it's a deposition that was for that case. I'll drag and drop it, move it to that that folder in Outlook. Now it's going up in the background and it'll be available in the platform. So forget what about stuff in it. We've made it as simple and easy as you know, as you can because drag and drop is great and we actually do have a lot of customers that, that use that. It's great for individual files here and there. But if you're trying to get a lot of information up or you're putting stuff up on a regular basis, it's much easier to just it's like, all right, wherever you got the file, you just right click on it and upload and it goes up or right right click on the folder and say upload 
or if it, like I said, if it's a folder that you're accessing all the time, you, you know, set that up so that it's always being monitored. If you set it up as a watch folder, it's like every 10 to 15 seconds it's getting checked. So what about from a broad perspective? What about from, a, from an Internet perspective? How much does it, does it impact uh, uh, how much broadband you need in order to do this? No, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, one of the things is you can, uh, you know, everybody asks, well, what kind of, you know, what kind of information can you upload to the, to the system? It's like, you can upload anything you want. Uh, uh, the caveat being if you're, you know, it's like if you're going to be uploading really huge files, uh, it's going to go up as fast as whatever your, whatever your pipe is. You know, it's like, I mean, nowadays, you know, everybody's got, you know, pretty fast, you know, pretty fast pipe. So even if you're uploading some, uh, you know, video files or, or image files, um, you know, they, they, they go up pretty quickly. One of the things to, to remember is when we upload, we automatically just, you know, we'll suck everything up and take it as quickly as it'll go through the pipe that you have, and then we process it in the background. So you're never going to be waiting, you know, like, Upload one file, wait for the process. Upload one file. It it all it, it's going to go up as as fast as the connection you have. Okay, and so use utilizing your own um, hard drive uh, that you open the document up with, and then you ship, when you save it, it just share, it saves it automatically into uh, the vault, right? Right. If it's set up uh, like like in here, this. Uh, right here, so this this file is set up as a watch folder. If I now open up this Word file, make a you know make a change to it and save it, that file will now get uploaded again, and uh, it'll have a version number appended to it. So uh, we actually have a uh, release coming up within the next month. That's um, we're actually in the platform. Uh, if you go to um, the screen right here, if uh, right here, see it, there were there were two different versions of the file that were uploaded. One 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 is edited and changed and uploaded again. A month from now, these two files will appear once, and then down here will be a little button for versioning and. and You'll click on it, and it'll show you. Okay, there's there's five versions of it that that you have you know, going back. Excellent, excellent. Hey, Eric, Mike Wagner here. Um, yes. Can have you ever white labeled the product? Yeah, for, we we typically don't do it for uh, for individual customers just because they you know they're not. They probably don't want to go to the center. If you have a really large customer that's going to have a large user base, uh, you know, we, you know, we charge for the for the white labeling. But basically, if you have, uh, you know, somebody else that wants to, let's, let's say somebody else that wants to resell it, if you can, uh, if you get them on board uh, as a strategic partner, we can set up and. Uh, a separate instance for them that's a uh, white label. That's, that's essentially what we've done for, uh, as most everybody knows that have listened to this before, uh, Toshiba is one of our uh, customers, and they have their own white label site. This is it right here. So and Telesphere does too, a couple of the telecom companies do as well, right? Yep. Yep. Let's see. There's there's the one for Telesphere, Storage Connect. So so yeah, we have the capability to white label it for um, you know for specific large enough customers or uh, strategic partners. Yeah, what, what, on the um, the back end, what's the re data? What? Sorry, I, you cut out there. What's the repository? What are you storing all this stuff in? Uh, everything is uh, in a 
highly secure data centers, like one of our partners is a company called DB4. They do digital forensics and e-discovery work. And uh, a couple years ago, they built out uh, an ultra-high security data center. I mean, you know, it's got, uh, it's like everything from biometric scans to be able to get in and multiple redundancies coming in. That's, uh, that's, where, that's where our platform resides. Um, we have, uh, within the data center itself, right in the servers, uh, if anybody's familiar with the term RAID, what it means is it's basically within the servers themselves, there are, you know, five hard drives. If four, four of them crap out, you just pull them out and replace them and it's still running. So it's like you have, you know, redundancy times five there. We've got, um, we have a, uh, backup storage array where everything's being backed up in real time. And then we also have an off-site backup. So compared to, uh, you know, I'm careful to never say you've got, uh, you know, no, nothing's ever 100%. You know, like uh, somebody drops a nuclear bomb on the northeast. Uh, you know, well, the data center will probably be running. It's like just nobody would access it. <laughs> but uh, you're, from a security and redundancy standpoint, uh, it's going to be probably orders of magnitude greater than what you got now. Right. What's the uh, yeah. yeah, and part B to that is what if I've got a customer that re that leverages Microsoft SharePoint? I believe it works with SharePoint, but then do the documents get stored in two separate one one in SharePoint and one in info? info yeah, whatever. we have. Just yeah, that's, that's actually a good, uh, good point. We've got uh, uh, we have the capability, um, and we got the instructions for it. You can export uh, data out of SharePoint and bring it in. Um, we don't have it's like we don't have a way to uh, connect directly into it. We do have a direct interface to um, Google Drive for anybody that uses Google Drive. Okay. You showed on the, on the oh, yeah. site on Outlook. Can you also um, uh, integrate with uh, Google and Gmail? Uh, well, actually, it's like we use Gmail, and, and uh, with Gmail, you can set it up. Uh, you can set it up with Outlook. So that, that's that's basically how we get the, you know get the information. You can't. Uh, Gmail, if you're going through the web interface, it's you know there's there's no there's no way to interface to it because it's because it's web based. Uh, you have to go through the back end through the uh, through the POP and SMTP gateway to get at okay. it. Okay. Andrew, it sounds like you had a question. Uh, I have a couple. Yeah. So. Um, I just need some clarification. So we're not using the uh, public uh, uh, SPN in this case. You're, you are creating an agent, uh, and it's accessible at the desktop, and it bypasses the the uh, internet entirely. Is that correct? Well, it doesn't bypass or the public. The public. The public. You're not you're not uh, providing a public. You're not using the public gateway. Correct. I mean, it's going through a it's going through a secure encrypted uh, connection. I mean, it's going through the internet. Yeah, but it's it's encrypted, and it and you and it, it would traditionally when you upload something, you're using the the uh, 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 the, the public the PSTN, and you're not doing that. Correct. Is yes. that correct? Okay. That's correct. All right. So that's that's a good point of clarification. And um, and then are you a, a lot of the storage companies have moved towards having a QR code so that let's say you have this depository and you want people who are non-subscribers to be able to deposit information uh, to let's say they have a client file and. Uh, mm -hmm keep it automated and you don't want to wait for their their fax or their email, they could upload it. Are you using QR codes at this point? 
Uh, we we are not. No. You mean but you mean basically like put a QR code in, then it would to QR code would be specific to a folder, and then any time yeah. uh, it's sent, uploaded. Uh, it has that QR code, and so the system knows where that's going, what folder it goes to. No, nope, but that's uh, one of the things. I mean, that's part of the roadmap uh, going forward for uh, adding um, kind of additional background workflow and processing. Uh, uh, kind of next generation where we want to get to is not only be able to uh, pull files up and OCR them, but actually be able to um, pull information out, create, you know, automatically create, um, you know, index fields, and also automatically be able to know, you know, where to route it and put it based on um, what it pulled out. So, and that's actually, I mean, uh, I hadn't heard about QR codes. I know, uh, I know a lot of people use uh, barcodes, which I mean, it's essentially kind of the same thing. It is. Uh, but the Q QR is a little more specific. Um, okay, so that was one question. Now, at the desktop level, when I have uploaded information to the info preserve, is there anything that would be identifiable on my document to suggest that I did already store it to info preserve? Yeah, if it's uh, if you're going from the uh, from the same directory up to the same category, uh, it, it it won't let you do it again because there's a there's a duplicate. Uh, right now, if I, you know, like you know, if I have multiple categories set up and I already go and take and upload the file, say to the Enron subcategory, and then I go and upload it to the Wills and Estates uh, category, you will upload it again because. Uh, uh, it's, not putting it it's treating it, 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 you're now putting it in a different area of the... Uh, right. Basically, uh, if I, I might not have, ac you know, if I'm uploading it, I might not have, have access to it or access rights to it wherever else it is. So for now, we're allowing them to upload it to places. Going forward, what uh, eventually what we'll do is, is uh, if it's, if it's going into a different area, but it has the identical, you know, identical signature to another file, well, it, it'll look like it's there in two places, but it'll just have a pointer to the one file. Right, right. Okay, so uh, back, I'm not sure it answered my question entirely, but at the desktop environment, yep. uh, I'm not in Info Preserve, I'm out of Info. Preserve. I'm at my desktop. I'm looking at documents. I am asking you, and 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 for that matter, emails. Since you have that up, would there be anything like a little star or anything that would tell me that that's been uploaded? No, because that's part. I mean, uh, with you know, it's like That, I mean, it's like uh, it's part of the file system, or it's part of uh, of Outlook. So, right now, no, we don't have any way to to designate that. All right. We basically have to and take think, uh, Outlook, Outlook, and and do a you know do a rewrite on it, or and take uh, you know take or, or take file you know Internet Explorer and and uh, write a new version of it in order to do that. In Outlook, well, in Outlook, we might be able to do that with a plug-in, because that's what we're doing now for the uh, for the upload agent. Uh, can this be used as a collaborative tool where you have multiple uh, users that access this depository for various reasons, like research or... Yep. Um, so uh, right the answer is yes. Yeah. If uh, right here, it's like I just clicked on this uh, this um, folder. Again, I keep referring to like this estate of Helena Kane. Let's say uh, you and I and several others were were working on it. We would each set up uh, that folder on, on our desktop, and then uh, basically when you go to set up. See this setting here. It says two-way sync. 
if you if you check that box, uh, and there's I won't go into it. There's a bunch of settings you can do with it. Um, if anything that that I save or edit will get pushed up not only to the platform but also pushed out to everybody else that has the two-way sync enabled. So if there's four of us working on the project and any of us add files or edit files, they'll automatically not only go up to the platform but automatically get pushed out to each other. And then at which time will it replace the uh, generation before that? Will it replace the document? To plan it, or will it? It'll, 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 it will push out, and you will get a you will get a document that will have a um, a version. You know, say it'll be the document name with a version number appended to it. So if yeah. if uh, you know if you edit it multiple times, obviously you'd have you'd have multiple versions. Okay. And of course, you can go again. I mean, if you want, you can get rid of older versions. And then once you're done, like, all right, once you're all done with the project, then there's no point in having everybody keeping copies. So then you can go and uncheck and get, you know, you, know, you can probably even get rid of the folder. And then, well, does uh, that actually purge what is in their folders when you do that, where it just doesn't uh, enter any new uh, updates? It, it won't. It won't purge. I mean, uh, it, whatever's in that folder will still still be there. So if you want to, okay. Yeah. And we don't, even with retention dates, we don't automatically go and delete anything because we want the cut. I mean, I don't want to get into deleting stuff for the customer. Yeah. Right. No, I was, what I was thinking about is uh, projects and dates that people wanted are consultants. They don't need to be able to access proprietary information anymore. So I guess I would just cut yeah, that privilege. What, yeah. Actually, that, that's actually another future uh, roadmap item is uh, are you familiar with uh, digital rights management, DRM? Yes. That's uh, down the road I want, want to build in. Basically, what for anybody that doesn't, doesn't know what, what that is, uh, uh, what digital rights management does is if uh, you know it's like if you download a file uh, normally once you download the file I've lost control of it there's nothing I can do but with uh, you know if you have digital rights management built into the information what happens is as long as you're you, you stay synced with uh, with the platform and uh, and the platform says yes, you're still an authorized uh, user. You'll be able to keep that file. But if, uh, you know, let's say, like you said, it's uh, consultants that were working on something, so you take away their access. You know, within whatever predetermined time you set up, that file will no longer be accessible. So that's uh, that, that's going down the road how we want to be able to control. Just that's another layer of control, and I, I would think that at an enterprise level, a lot of companies would want that. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's really the the um, you know the the uh, uh, you know kind of the uh, crux of what we're trying to do is like make it so that. And it's as simple and easy as possible for people to get at the information wherever they need, but also, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, control that information. Yeah. It's always a balance between do you lock down so tight that nobody can see it versus um, putting it, you know, putting it out there so that, um, uh, that people can use it. Anyway, well, um, I don't, I don't, you know, thank you for yeah. for answering those questions. I'm fine on my end now. Thank you. Okay, I was going to say we can take more of those off, offline. Uh, anybody have any uh, different questions? I don't think so. I think you've covered it all. Yeah, it's probably way more in depth there with with Andrew than we wanted to get. But sorry, I'm good for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Andrew. That's okay. Uh, 
Well, hey, um, Eric, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, showing us the new user interface and uh, how the vault looks now at Info Preserve. And guys, I, I can't um, encourage you more than to reach out to Eric. Uh, he's got your contact information too, so he'll probably be reaching out to you as well uh, to set you up with your own free account so that you know you can store your own documents and have access to them while you're on the road wherever you are. Uh, but more importantly, so you can show your customers how easy it is for you to access your files uh, and your information while you're on their site uh, and, and show them what they could be doing with their own information. So, Eric, again, appreciate uh, the time and the effort. All right. Well, thank you, and I uh, look forward to uh, you know, it's like, uh, working with everybody and helping me out any way I can. All right. Hey, I appreciate it, and I uh, appreciate everyone taking time out of their selling day to uh, – uh, learn more about Info Preserve and how you can position it with your customers and look forward to talking to you again next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.